Okay, so today we will talk about a very modern topic that is called like high availability with Kubernetes Federation. Um, like this topic is about how to like achieve the um, very important item, you know, for example, for the SRE engineer that uh, is called high availability. So that means that, um, like, um, uh, for example, if you will deploy something, uh, like you will have some kind of uh, make some mechanism of the disaster recovery and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And also, like we will talk about how to simplify some kind of deployment and how to make the propagation of your resources uh, across the multiple Kubernetes clusters. So before we start, so we will start like step by step. So before we start uh, with the federation topic, uh, let's. Uh, try to refresh our memory and remind ourselves how the Kubernetes actually works and how the architecture of the simple Kubernetes cluster looks like. So if you will take a look on this schema, so here is presented the, uh, the very simple cluster that has like two layers. One it's a control plane and another one it's a data plane. And also on this schema, like the main components that are related to the control plane instances and to the worker instances are presented. Let's take a look on the control plane instance. Uh, there are like four main components uh, that are presented in the Kubernetes control plane. I'm pretty sure that you are familiar with that. Uh, if not, so we will just like try to um, take a look on that and understand what are that components and why we need it. So the First and central component, it's an API server. It's some kind of entry point uh, where the like, uh, developers, administrators, uh, or clients send the requests uh, and queries with uh, like information to control the, the Kubernetes cluster itself. Also, we have the etcd that that is like a distributed key value storage. Actually, it's just call the key value storage however it's uh, some kind of like the state storage for distributed systems maybe for example you are familiar with apache zookeeper so this tool works in the same way so we need this component and it's pretty critical like to store all the state from the cluster um, like to orchestrate the resources and configurations also we have the scheduler um, that is called like for uh, like applying of the configuration to the different um, to the different worker nodes and we have a control manager that also are involved uh, with handling of the native kubernetes resources and also we have some kind of resources that are related to the worker nodes however like in the perspective of this topic like this is not so important so let's just focus on the control plane instance um like and as I mentioned, this schema just shows how to how the single single master node cluster uh, control plane looks like. On on the next schema, we have like the multi node control plane, and this is a preferable way how you should uh, like handle your Kubernetes cluster architecture, because like in that case uh, you won't have some kind of bottleneck. And in that case, it will be like easier to um, make some kind of disaster recovery and um, you will have a better redundancy. So just uh, the same story, like you have the same components, but that components are replicated across the multiple master nodes. And if something will happen, then the election and replacement mechanism will be turned off on and like, the critical component that are failed, it will be replaced with the healthy components. Uh, but still in this schema, we have like the four components and we have ETCD. Like ETCD in this schema uh, is embedded in, with, a, with a master node. So it, it is run on the same node. And, but this not so good as like, as we need. And we will talk about this later, but just remember this one that like etcd uh, like this schema is almost perfect but not so 
Also, you can see some kind of label that is uh, that is marked with N plus one. What does it mean? Also, this is very important and common fact that you need to like remember. If you build the multi-master control plane, just like remember that you need to have the odd number of the nodes. And this is important for the election mechanism that we will take a look on the next slide. Like, uh, as I mentioned, like we have a multiple different components uh, that are, could be replaced if you have the like the multi master structure, and like the scheduler and control manager like are the most important components that are like have some kind of leader election mechanism. Like um, API server is not so important because uh, there are mm, there is no connection and there is no interaction between the API servers. And for example, if one of the IPA servers will be failed, you probably might feel some kind of uh, like reducing of the latency. However, like uh, everything will still work fine. So just in case when all the API servers on all the nodes will be failed. So in that case, you like uh, the um, uh, Kubernetes cluster will be dead. So it's a like a big disaster. So <laughs> like in that case, just like everything will be nothing. So just no worries about that. Um, and if you could see also that uh, here, the ETCT cluster is highlighted. So in that case, as I mentioned, like all nodes of the ETCD cluster are placed on the same master nodes, but this is not good because for example, if you lose one master node, um, you might probably lose some portion of the um, configuration data and uh, like, in that case, even if you will have a, a like second and third master in your structure, uh, the part of the configuration might be missed and the orchestration probably won't be successful for 100 percentage. And for the rest components, as I mentioned, scheduler and controller manager, everything is fine. So if it's placed on the um, multiple nodes and one like instance of this service will be failed, then like the election will be produced between uh, the rest of the um, instances of this service and everything will be fine and everything will work fine. And uh, why we actually looking on this schema and why it's important, it's uh, this schema shows like um, the importance of the ETCD component. And on the next slide, I'll show you two different topologies that are preferable and recommended uh like to set up your kubernetes cluster and like it doesn't matter how you like set up your cluster it could be the bare metal cluster or it could be cloud cluster um so just don't care about this one and like, remember the like the main principles like we have two different topologies we have topologies with the um, like embedded etcd cluster and with a standalone like external etcd cluster so let's take a look on the uh, schema with the um, embedded ETC cluster. So it's the same schema as before. However, like we will talk more detailed about the main risks. And the main risks, as I mentioned, if like something will will happen, something wrong will happen with your control plane nodes, um, like then your redundancy it will be compromised, and probably the orchestration don't want like work fine. However, in that case, like the advantages um. Uh, of this case that you don't need to care uh, about setting up uh, of the standalone ETCD cluster um, and everything will work from box. However, like it won't be so great as, as we expected. And another schema, it's uh, like when you use the standalone ETCD cluster. So this schema works better because like in case of uh, like failure of the one control plane node, uh, everything will work fine and uh, like this will cause less impact on your infrastructure and the orchestration itself. However, mm, like this schema also has some cavities, not so serious. However, like mm, it depends on your, um, like on your possibilities. And for example, for this, for realization and implementation of this schema, uh, you need, like, you need to multiply the count of your, for example, virtual machines like twice. 
For example, if you have a three control plane node, you need to have the ETC cl ETCD cluster that contains like three three different instances. However, as I mentioned, this this provides like better high availability and like just remember this schema because we will be need this for the implementation of the uh, federated approach. Like now we are ready, so we have the like, background and we have bases and we can talk about the federation itself. So. Uh, Kubernetes Federation, or it has some kind of shortcut that is called KubeFed. It's some kind of tool that allows you to coordination of your configuration across the multiple clusters, multiple Kubernetes clusters. And like this allows you like to maintain just uh, one host cluster and all the resources from the cluster will be automatically propagated to underlying clusters. Let's take a look on the main federation concept. So the federation uh, tool, so it consists of two, two, two components. One is the CLI utility, like you have kubectl. For this case, you will have the kubefed CTL. And also the federation itself contains some kind of like internal services. So uh, those services are similar like you have for the Kubernetes control plane. So it has its own scheduler, it has its own, own controller manager. However, the, uh, those services will work globally and it will schedule and control the resources across the underlying clusters. And it will examine the underlying clusters all the time and verify that um, like the preferred configuration are uh, applied and propagated to the underlying services. So this will help you like to omit some kind of headache like with um, orchestration of the multiple clusters. If you will take on this schema, so it demonstrates how, for example, CI-CD will work when, when you use some kind of external CI-CD tool to propagate all your resources across the multiple clusters and how it works when you use the federated approach. So federated approach is, um, like imagined on the uh, uh, right uh, image, right, right picture. So in the first case, you will have the external app that will go across all your clusters one by one and will apply your infrastructure. In the second case, you will have the, the same, you will have the same CI-CD uh, system, but those CI-CD system will just apply the resources to the uh, host cluster. And after that, uh, the host cluster that contains the Kubernetes Federation control plane, it will propagate it across like underlying clusters. You could actually think that uh, in the second schema, we have some kind of bottleneck. Yeah, like we have a host cluster. And for example, if something will be like will happen with a host cluster, then you probably might have some problems. However, like, in the past, we discussed how we can build some kind of um, highly available cluster. So uh, in that case, you need them. Like you just need to use two approaches. Like you need to use the multi-master control plane, and like it's recommended to use the external etcd. So in that case, uh, your host cluster will be protected, and if something will be wrong, like you don't need to worry about that because like the chance of the like, critical failure will be will be minimal um, and like one more important thing um, related to the to the host cluster and the propagation of the resources if for example if something will happen with the uh, host cluster you don't need to worry because all the resources that were propagated across the like underlying clusters it will be still persisted because uh, like it's some kind of native resources like you uh, work every day, like deployment services and et cetera, et cetera. And it, like those resources will be written on the like, ETCD of the underlying cluster. So, and if uh, something will happen with Federation control plane, like no worries, uh, no disaster will be there. So you just will have like enough time to understand what happens with your like host cluster and how to fix it. Here is presented like advantages and the main cavities of the federation approach. So let's go with advantages and then let's go with the cavities. So the main advantage is that in that case, you will have the high availability. So for example, 
like let's imagine that you use the Kubernetes as a, as a cloud service, like in the AWS, in the Azure, GCP, so it doesn't matter. And you have some kind of ability that like to deploy all the instances of that cluster to the different availability zones. And in that, in that case, this is also the key feature to support the high availability. However, for example, let's imagine probably this is um, uh, this could happen, however, with a minimal chance, like if the whole region will be down it. So what 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 then? Like then you will like lose all your infrastructure. And the federation support, like uh, it allows you to propagate uh, your resources. Uh, for the clusters that are placed in the in the different regions, and it um, like gives us the like next next advantages. Like it's uh, reduced latency. You can set up the load balancers in such way that like will um, serve the traffic for the clients that are like most closely located most closely to uh, to the region where your underlying cluster is located. Also, you have the fault isolation. So for example, it's easier to operate with a couple of the main, small clusters than uh, to operate with one huge cluster. And again, if something will happen with one small cluster, like you will have the um, redundancy, you will have the disaster recovery and your infrastructure will, will still work. And you will have like an extra time to understand what happened. Also, like this gives you a great scalability. Like you can, uh, you don't have any kind of limit how many clusters you can join to the um, to your federation. And also because, for example, like some some kind of Kubernetes installation, it has some kind of limits for, for example, for the pods count and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Like in that case, if you can scale without any limits. Also, you don't have any kind of vendor log because you can use the federation with the Kubernetes itself, and it doesn't matter how this Kubernetes was configured, like with the cloud service, or it could be the bare metal Kubernetes. For example, if you have the hybrid infrastructure, like you have, for example, AKS cluster, you have a GKE cluster and EKS cluster, so you can bring everything in the one infrastructure and like you will have everything in one place and you don't need to care about the different CI CD pipelines uh, to provide your infra uh, like and your resources to the different uh, cloud providers. And we have two problems. And one problem is like that in some cases, uh, it's not mandatory, it's optionally. However, in some cases you might have uh, like slightly bigger uh, bill for for the network uh, utilization because for example if you uh, like the Kuber, uh, kubernetes federation control plane it examines the underlying clusters underlying clusters control planes uh, all the time and um, like this will bring some kind of additional network traffic but it won't be so huge uh, like for example when you use uh, the streaming of the videos or something like that and another one that you have a limited cross cluster isolation and for example if you have the common problem and like you will propagate um, like your resources with some kind of bug or something like that it will be propagated uh, to underlying clusters without any checks and in that case like uh, you like you need to make sure that before you deploying everything you need to make uh, some kind of additional checks to verify that everything works fine. Because uh, in the other case, if you will deploy everything with a bug, so it will be deployed on all underlying clusters and the problem will be global and not isolated. So just to make sure. But uh, as I mentioned, there is some kind of workaround for this one. So for the management of the Kubernetes Federation, like and all the configurations that are related for the Kubernetes Federation uh, are implemented in the Kubernetes native way with a custom resource definition. And we have two kinds of configuration. Uh, one configuration, it's a cluster configuration. Uh, so it's some kind of custom resource that contains the information uh, about the underlying cluster. 
uh, and all the credentials and etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, like to allow the federation control plane examine the underlying control planes and also the type configuration so it contains some kind of binding um, like that allows you to propagate some kind of resources However, like um, for the native resources, uh, all the type configurations are provisioned. But for the, for example, if you use in your infrastructure, I don't know, the operator support or something like that, uh, in that case, like these give you ability to like propagate also the custom resources. So the Federation API is pretty flexible and allows you like to extend it. Here, uh, how the main uh, main difference like uh, of the resource, how it looks like. So from the left side, we can see the native deployment. And from the right side, we have the example of the federated deployment. You just need to like remember, and it's very simple, that all resources that should be federated and information about these resources, it will be uh, store it in the um, custom resources that has like prefix federated and after that the kind of your resource and under it it contains three different options like its placement template and overrides the last one is optional let's go through all of them so the placement section it describes um how to propagate your resources across which underlying clusters like you will propagate the resources. So like in this case, like for this example, as the schema is empty, so the resources will be propagated across all the clusters without any like selection or something like that. However, you can use two approaches. You can put the name of the clusters like directly, the whole list, or you can, for example, select the clusters with a label. Like it's a native Kubernetes approach uh, for example, you can see it here, like for the deployment, it match labels for the underlying pods and underlying replica sets. So here it works in the same way. Uh, then template. So template section, it contains like the information and main template of your resource. So if you will take a look, like uh, for this resource, except the IPA version kind of metadata, uh, there is just uh, like a spec section. So you can just copy this spec section to the you know, under the template and like the resources with binding for the deployment it will be created and propagated across your clusters. So no worries. Just remember that this is like just template for your future resource that you will propagate. And the last and section. Dara, I'm yes. just sorry for interruption, but we have one question in our chat. Can yeah, you sure. check? Sure, just a sec. Let me because sorry, I like. Uh, okay, I can read. I can read. Uh, yeah. How how federation between providers work when using things like different secrets, CSI, X Azure K Vault or AKS? Uh, so this like it's what I'm like uh, talking now, like about the override section. Yeah, I, I I was just going to to come in and say that it, you don't need to answer. I I understand now. Okay. Yes. So let, let 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 me. Sorry, guys. I probably cannot see the chat. So Arthur, I will just ask you if some questions will be inside of the chat. So please just uh, interrupt me and, and ask me because like I cannot see the chat. Sorry for that, guys. Okay. Uh, and like let me uh, also answer on this question. So the last section that is called overrides. So it allows you like to apply some kind of patching mechanism for the different clusters. For example, if you have the Azure clusters, um, you can like use some kind of overrides that, like to use uh, the different kind of resources or patch your resources. So here is pretty small example. However, we have a live demo at the end and, and I'll show you the full example of how it works. However, if you are familiar with a JSON pass and you are familiar with a customized tool, so it will be pretty straightforward for you. So, like, let's uh, remember this uh, this item and let's back to it at the end of our of our conversation. So uh, it's how the federated resource looks like. However, one more important thing, like to provide uh, them. To provide the federated resources so you don't need to write such kind of manifests from from scratch 
So you can write like this simple manifest, yeah? And after that, you have a cube fed CTL tool that allows you to transform your resource template to the federated template. So it's pretty straightforward and you don't need to worry about that. Uh, and it's uh, pretty cool because, for example, you can use some kind of Helm charts for that and you can embed uh, the cube, cube fed CTL to the Helm chart hooks. And this will allow you to make, like, write the resources in the native way. However, like to apply the automatic transformation to the federated kind. Uh, the next one, like uh, the installation of the control plane for the federation. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you need to install the control plane on your host cluster. And this is allowed with the Helm chart. So it's pretty straightforward. The first step is that you need to add the custom repo from the Kubernetes 6 organization. And this will allow you to like install this chart. And the second one that you installing this chart itself, and you actually don't need to pass any kind of overrides or the parameters because everything works from box. However, it's pretty flexible. So you can configure it. And if you are interested in that, uh, so just refer to the official documentation where you will find the, find the, the whole tutorial and in that whole the, in that tutorial you will find all the options that you can override but in this comment uh, what are actually happens that we install all the things that are related to the kubernetes federation to the specific namespace that is called cube federation system like the like cube system or cube federation system yeah uh, it's not mandatory to call it in such a way however like it's uh, the official example like example from the official documentation so it's up to you how you will name it. Um, then you need to install the specific version on the latest one. However, I suggest to use the specific version because like the guys that maintain this repo, uh, they like to uh, release the, some kind of, like, push some kind of draft releases and probably you might use the latest version. However, that, that version won't be tested uh, for 100 percentage and you might have some problems so just uh, visit their github page verify the page with releases and find uh, the stable and latest release not the pre-release or draft or something like that and just install the latest uh, the stable version and also we have the create... sorry for interruption yeah. i have one question if you don't mind yeah, uh, go ahead. i'm pretty much interested in your presentation it's quite quite nice uh, but in terms of carriers of this approach I just I have just um, uh, think thought about some kind of security issues that might er, uh, actually happen with that, and I'm pretty much interested in terms of service accounts control. So basically, you have a control plane which tells other control planes what to do in the cluster. Yep, definitely. So yeah. how the uh, how it actually um, affects uh, the existing role-based access approach in, sp in a specific cluster, because probably you will have some kind of super user uh, on top of it. So it's slightly out of our topic today. However, I'm ready to answer. So um, even in case if you don't use the federation stuff uh, and you use, for example, CI CD tool to propagate your resources, in that case, you will have like a service account with credentials and with some kind of limited access. So yeah. in that case, you, you like it, it, uh, it's up to you how you build your security system. I'll show, I'll show how to propagate them. Like on the next slides, I'll show how to propagate the credentials um uh, for the uh, federation control plane however like you can use that demonstration to understand how you inject like your security view uh, to this approach but in that case like it doesn't matter for example you can use the ci cd system and you will still have the service account to operate with uh, uh, like your cluster control plane and here you will have the orchestration mechanism that will also operate with that service account. So it doesn't matter, you still provide the credentials for the external system. Yeah, that's true. But in case of, your, you know, this, um, if, if we 
um, back, go back to to the picture you showed us with these uh, deploy deployments, you know, on the left and on the right. Uh, in that case, we only like um, communicate with a single cluster, with a single control plane. So we have like, a single um, service account per cluster per control plane, which which are different by design. Uh, and in the case of the right side of the picture, right, as, as far as I understand, it might be a misconception, but again, uh, we have a single service account for the host cluster, right? Uh, and then we have like... It's unknown because like it's uh, the common schema. Uh, like, it uh, shows the common concept, however, without the like deep details. And we don't know if it, like the, if the app deployer uh, from the, like that is demonstrated uh, on the picture from the left side. If it's used the single service account, or it's used the multiple service accounts, or maybe it used some kind of like external uh, mechanisms of the authentication or and authorization with the cluster. So it's unknown. It's a common. Concept. Yeah, sure, sure, I understand that. But for interaction with a host cluster, right? We have a, a so-called single API server right for the host cluster yeah, it's, or uh, the same it's it's like the same cluster like you have however like you might pay more attention for the high availability or the host cluster okay that, that's fine so we have we have a service account which interacts with the api server of host cluster right and then host cluster uh actually replicates the deployment i would like to replicate across some underlying clusters yeah. But uh, how how the security works uh, between host cluster and and underlying clusters? Mm -hmm. Is it some like I don't know how to say gold mode or maybe it's just some limited access? How, how this could be configured? Should it be just a single service account to interact with multiple clusters, or it works out of the box somehow? Okay, I got you. So this is like the early question because like we will take a look about this like on the next next slides. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Let's go with that. So uh, I will tell about the like joining of the cluster and we'll tell about the main mechanism of the authorization and probably this might be the answer on your question. Thanks. Sorry Makes for sense. early question. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's totally fine. So uh, sometimes it like why I usually like it's just my my own. However, like why I'm usually um, asking the questions almost at the end of the meetings somewhere. So, for example, when I have some kind of trainings, usually I'm asking everything at the end because sometimes the answer for my question it, it's it could sound like uh, uh, slightly later uh, in the. In the I'm discussion. totally fine. With was that answer just wanted to double check if I fully follow what you're talking about. So thanks. Yeah, yeah you're 100 percent right. So I will I, I'll glad that it's interesting and that like like that I have some kind of questions during the discussion. It's also it's also cool. And I'm I will try like to satisfy your expectation <laughs> with that. Uh, okay, so we stopped on the installation of this one and let's go like this actually the next slide that I mentioned <laughs> uh, that probably will be the answer for your question. So when you configure the multiple clusters and um, you want to join the clusters to the Federation itself, so you, do, uh, you are doing some kind of um, preparation and probably it might be done from I don't know, your CI CD system or like from your own laptop. Um, and uh, the credentials that will be passed to the Federation control plane uh, to control the underlying clusters, it will be configured through your local kubectl config file. And like, uh, like it depends on on your needs, how you will configure your kubectl config uh, and which way you will used to authenticate with your cluster. So it will, it will just grab the configuration of the context from your local config and will use that approach uh, like to control the underlying cluster. So now you have a full freedom how you will configure the authentication mechanism, how you can limit the access of the kubefed CTL, uh, like Kubernetes Federation control plane to your underlying clusters. Like you have a, a lot of different ways. And as I mentioned, like this is slightly out of the topic because it's more related to the security concepts. 
However, like if you know how to provide the fully secured way to connect uh, to the cluster control plane, like just implement it and pass it to the federation control plane and everything will work fine. Thanks. Yeah. So I hope that this actually the answer for your question. <laughs> Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so you don't need like to deep dive, uh, just uh, configure everything in the native way and just pass it to the utility and uh, all the magic will be done. So in that case, we uh, have a cluster one, uh, like this will be some kind of the, some part of the visual demo today. However, I will just replicate these comments also on slides. So we have a cluster one that definitely will be the, uh, one of the underlying cluster and also it will work as a host cluster because I have a limited resources on my laptop and I like I cannot um, uh, start uh, three uh, three different clusters on my machine. Uh, so it will work like in two modes like it will be the host and it will work also as an underlying cluster. So this approach will be fine. however, for the production purposes, don't do it in such way. So we are doing these in, in such way just for the demonstration purposes. Um, so uh, I used the Minikube on my laptop to set up to, like two similar similar cluster and I have like the federated control plane installed and I have kube fat CTL utility installed on my laptop. And I have the kube CTL configuration on my laptop that has the context for the cluster one and cluster two. And I just joined the clusters to the federation uh, Federation control plane, it will pass the credentials and store it on the host cluster and the Federation control plane will be able to orchestrate down the LAN clusters. And to get, uh, like here is presented also the command that allows you to get the information about the connected clusters. And as I mentioned, all the configurations like for the clusters, it's uh, some kind of custom resource definition. So this resource is called cube fed clusters. And you can uh, like check how many time ago the cluster was joined to the federation, uh, the status of the cluster, the version. However, like this is just the common details. If you will take a look uh, like more detailed to this kind of resource, you will see that it contains a, a huge portion of the information about the underlying clusters. Uh, then, like let's imagine that we have some kind of um, like federation with a couple of clusters, and now we like want to propagate the resources. Uh, to propagate the resources, we need like firstly we need to enable the support of this kind resource kind. If we are talking about the native resources like deployment services, etc. As I mentioned, those resources are propagated uh, like it's enabled by default and you don't need to enable it. But for example, if you use the custom resource definition that you want to propagate, like you need to enable this API type. And um, like you can replace this uh, placeholder with the kind, uh, kind name, or for example, with the common name of the resource, or for example, with a full name that will contain the API version, API group, and the resource name itself. And once you enable it, then you can federate those resource like of, of the specific type and this is specific name and once you will federate so you can make the in-place federation like you can federate it in the cluster or you can use still you can use the federate command to transform your um local manifests uh to become the federated resource and also you can use additional flags, but uh, and there are a lot of different flags, so I won't count it uh, right now. So you can take a look on the official documentation. However, there are there is some kind of shortcut for this command, and if you don't want to like enable it or uh, something like that, or you have a dynamic name for your custom resource definition that you want to enable, so you can use just one command, the same, but just add the flag that uh, enable type. So it will up, like if this flag is presented, the enable command uh, will be prepended uh, before that, and uh, you don't need to enable it by default. However, like if you will federate the resource and those resource uh, is not enabled in the federation control plane, uh, the resource will be created without any errors. However, 
um, you won't have any kind of propagation uh, to underlying clusters. And if you will take a look on the status uh, field of the of those resources, like you will see the additional information, and you will see that resource is not enabled and resource is not propagated. So it's uh, not the black box, and it's uh, very easy um, like to debug it and to understand uh, what is wrong. And here is the main pipeline. So we will summarize all the steps before we will do um, uh, the main demo. Uh, we will summarize everything that we discussed and we will build some kind of workflow steps that you need to um, uh, follow uh, to have success with a federation approach. So the first step is like preparation of the host cluster. There's also a question in the chat. Yeah. I can read it. Yep. Uh, if you know. uh, would clusters that join at federation still be accessible in the classic way? Would changes done classic way sync automatically with kubefeed? Yeah, definitely you can operate with um, with a cluster still in the same way because um, as a, why like why we saw that the federated resources it's um, not it started with a custom resource definition with the federated prefix so it's resources that if if you are familiar with the kubernetes federation approach uh, sorry kubernetes operator approach so then you know how to work the custom resource definition and like um, all the information about the resources that should be propagated it will be stored in the control plane however if you will create uh, the um, uh, native resources in the underlying clusters so everything will be fine so you don't need to care about this. It's a one point. Another point that you could have uh, two different ways how you will work with federation. You can uh, set up the global federation, like federation across the all namespaces on the underlying clusters, or you can just set up uh, the federation with a just specific namespace. So we will work with the rest of the namespace in the same way, and the federated namespace will contain the resources that were propagated by the federation control plane. Make sense? Yeah, and the second part of the question uh, printed in the chat is about if the change is done in a classic way, sync automatically with kubefed, so I doubt it will be, it cannot be actually. Yeah, because like to um, join the resources that you created uh, probably manually, like you don't have the federated uh, configuration in the control plane. So it like that means that your resource, your own resource, like it won't be managed by the federation itself. To make it manageable by the federation itself, you just need to create the federated configuration and apply it to host cluster. And then federation control plane will capture your resource and will take it under control. So if you done some changes in like classic ways, so federation control will override it with sometimes. Uh, nope, nope, no, because like, um, just a sec. Let's, or, let's 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 get back to uh, to this slide. So you have the resource like this is a native resource, and on your in on your underlying clusters, everything will be created as the native resources. So if you created the federation deployment, federated deployment on your underlying cluster, you won't see the federated deployment resource. You will see the deployments. This resource, like federated kind of resource, it will be stored on the federation control plane host. So uh, for example, if you created the, like you, if you created this deployment and you don't have the federation uh, configuration applied to your host cluster, so this resource will be like standalone and the federation federation control pane uh, won't touch your resource because it's not under the control however like if you will decide that like you have this deployment resource and you decided that you want to take this resource and put it under the under the control of the federation control plane so you just need to create the federated kind configuration and we'll just apply it to host cluster. And after that, this resource will be captured and controlled uh, via federation. So everything that was created uh, like 
manually on underlying clusters won't be captured by federation itself automatically and you don't need to worry about that make sense yep thanks perfect let's back to the latest slide okay so uh the first step as i mentioned we will prepare the host cluster and we know all the bases to prepare the cluster that will be highly available and will be able to orchestrate the underlying clusters even, even in case of the failure of some instances. Also, you need to prepare the federated clusters. So it's underlying clusters. And here you need to decide like on your possibilities. If you have like enough costs and enough budget, um, then you can set up also it in the highly available way. However, like if you have limited costs, you can set up, for example, the clusters with a single master node. So it's up to you. The third step is joining of the like underlying clusters to the federate, uh, federation control plane. So we will uh, demonstrate it. The fourth step is federate the resources. So for example, you have some a couple of resources, native resources, and you need uh, like to transform it to the uh, federated kind. I also show how, how it works. And the last step, it's probably manual. So it's just a result of your suffer. Um, like it's a replication. So all the resources, federated resources that you uh, apply to the cluster, uh, host cluster, it will be propagated across the underlying clusters. So, um, and one more thing that you just need to check that like once you apply the federated kind, resource kind, um, just you just need to set up some kind of monitoring or um, alerting that will automatically check that all the deployments that were propagated works pretty fine. Like so, because like federation, it's not the monitoring tool; it's tool for the like, global orchestration, and the monitoring stuff should be implemented by yourself. Uh, before we will start the practical the practical demonstration, uh, does anybody have some kind of questions that we can back and discuss? I have like an important comment regarding uh, your etcd slide. In order to uh, amount of uh, instances to be even all the time or it should be two n plus one not n plus one it's just uh, like, i think uh, yep definitely uh, yeah, the I, I i saw the like there are um a different markation of the like odd number you it could be like two n plus one or it could be like n plus one so definitely uh yeah it probably might be two and plus one so i'll fix it yeah, however, fine thank you yeah so just 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 as a, like i paid your attention that like that you need to remember that you need to have the odd number of nodes <laughs> and that's all what you need to to check however like it's a good catch thanks yeah good catch because you know if you multiply even or odd number twice it will always be an even number so that if you plus one it will give yeah, you for example if you have number. one and plus one it will be two yeah totally agreed <laughs> thanks okay so uh let's start then with demo or maybe somebody else also have any kind of questions okay uh however like in any case if you will have any kind of questions just interrupt me that works fine so um i slightly saved your time because we already sitting like 50 minutes <laughs> and i uh, did some kind of uh, preparation uh, so i have some kind of spreadsheet i definitely will share it with you um, after our discussion and you will be able like um, to uh, to do everything by yourself so i started let's discuss what i already did and what what should be should be done here what else so i started two different clusters so each cluster takes like two minutes to start so i just saved like a cup like almost five minutes of our time uh and let's take a look uh so here i have the 
terminal. Uh, just one more thing. Do you see the terminal or I probably need to scale it up? Looks fine to me. Okay, because I can like zoom in. So if somebody who have a problem with visualization, just let me know and I will zoom it. So I configured two clusters with a mini cube. Uh, let's take about, let's, let's check which clusters we have here. Okay. Strunk it. So I have two clusters uh, that are based on the virtual box and uh, use the Docker container runtime. And uh, each of them has one node. So, and if I will take a look, like as I, as I use the mini cube, so it configures my cube CTL configuration automatically. And I can take a look on the list of my contexts that are already configured. So I have two contexts. I have the context for the cluster one that uh, like from my point of view will be the, also the host cluster. And I have a cluster two that will be like uh, the minion cluster with underlying clusters. So uh, the first thing that I need to do like before um, installation of the federation control plane that I need to switch to the context of the cluster that I will use as a host. And again, great news that I already installed everything with that commons and we have like, <laughs> we don't need to um, spend time for that. So for now we have a cube fat CTL tool that we need to use to join the clusters. Uh, but before we uh, join the clusters, let's try to verify like how many clusters we have in the federation. And as you can see, no resources found. That means like that we don't have any kind of configuration for the for the clusters, and like it looks bad. Let's uh, join both clusters. So we will use like, this approach. Uh, so it says that everything were configured successfully. Um, and um, the like, cluster roles, specific cluster roles uh, was created uh, in my uh, like underlying cluster. And let's connect the second cluster. Okay, the same. And now let's verify how many clusters we have in the Federation. Okay, so this might take some time. Okay, so now we have two clusters and both of them are ready. Now, uh, like we also have two dashboards, like to do not uh, run everything from the uh, terminal. So I will show you a couple of things uh, that are related to the federation and maybe this will be like a better organization. Um, so, as I mentioned, like we have a custom resource definition for the um, configuration of the underlying cluster. And um, as I showed you, like here, resource that called cube fed clusters. So, and you can see that it contains two different objects. And for example, this is our host cluster and this uh, our the like median cluster. And if we will take a look, so as I mentioned, it contains the configuration for the uh, control planes of the underlying clusters. It contains the reference for the secret that contain the credentials, CA uh, bundles and like additional status information. Uh, and for now, like let's check uh, which namespaces we have. So we have a uh, like a couple of the namespaces. So it's not the federated namespace or something like that um, to start work on the, um, on the federation itself. We need to create the federated namespace because uh, like you cannot use the federated resources without the federated namespace. Like in the same way, like for the native Kubernetes, you cannot use the uh, namespace scope resources uh, that uh, uh, are created without the namespace. But for the cluster scope resources, everything still working the same way like for the, for the native resources. So let's create um, uh, how it, it will actually works. So we will use the kubectl. So I'll show you um, a different examples how this could be done. Like in place, um, 
a modification and also like delayed modification of the resources to be federated. Let's create the namespace. So it's a simple namespace. It's not the federated namespace itself. So I'm using I'm using the cluster one. So it's uh, my host cluster, and it contains the resource. Uh, like it contains the federated control plane. So I create the namespace uh, like that is called federated NS. And if I will take here, so. I have the federated NS resource. But if I will take a look on my second cluster, nothing changed because like it's a simple namespace. So what I can do right now, I can federate this namespace. Like what it will do, it will create the federated configuration in my host on my host cluster uh, that will um, allows them propagation of this namespace uh, to the underlying clusters. So I will use the cube fed CTL, federate NS and federate NS uh, namespace. So as we saw in uh, uh, on some slides on from the presentation. Okay, so resource to federate is a namespace. Okay, so it will, it took the namespace and created the custom resource federated namespace with a specific name. And okay, so here is a cluster too, and we see that this namespace, it was uh, propagated automatically. So here is presented and here is also presented. Okay, now what we actually need to do like this is a simple example. Let's try to create a couple of resources and um, like let's create a simple deployment. Uh, but before that, let's review how this deployment looks like. Um, okay, could you see the text in the notepad? Is it yes. fine or? Okay, perfect, thanks. So it's a simple deployment. So it has the Nginx that will be run it um, like in, in the host cluster, well, yeah. Uh, so what I actually want to do, so I can use two different approaches. Um, I can federate the local file, yeah, uh, to transform that local file um, to, to be federated. However, when I use the local files, those changes, it like, won't be applied because I use the local file. So nothing will be applied. It will be just uh, um, printed to the S3 out. Because before that, we federated the resource that uh, was already created and in the cluster. So in that case, um, let me make it bigger. Okay, so as I mentioned, yeah, like we've uh, had um, the simple resource, now it's federated deployment. And it has three sections. It has a placement, it has a template that contains the specification for for my deployment. And by default, the placement will be empty. And it means that um, this deployment, it will be propagated um, across uh, all the all the clusters. And I don't have the override, override section. So it means that it will be like the same, the same content of this resource. Um, so let's, uh, let's apply it. So I will just do it in such way. Like I will just take the output from the cube fed CTL and put it um, uh, to the cube cube CTL STDN. Uh, and I also will select the namespace. So I need to use the federated namespace, the namespace that I provisioned. Okay, and I have the federated deployment here. Let's take a look on the deployment. So here is my host cluster and I can see that Nginx deployment is created. Let's take a look here. Okay, and here is also created. And definitely for both of them, we have, yeah, let, let me maybe switch to the uh, namespace. Okay, so here we have two pods and here we have two pods. So everything is replicated. And as additional example, I just render it. Um, I prepare it and um, some kind of 
federated configuration that contains the placement configuration. So I'm doing here the placement and I'm putting like the direct names of the cluster where I just want to propagate those, those this resource. And also I have some kind of overrides. Uh, here you have like the overrides, it, it contains the array of objects and for each cluster or probably you might use the like not the direct name of the cluster but you can use the label selection mechanism like uh, for example if you have uh, some clusters with some label you can apply the patch for that and again if you are familiar with json paths so it works uh, in the same way like x pass for the html however like it works for the json and for the yaml so in that case what i just want to overwrite i just want for the Override for the cluster two. I just want to set the count of the replicas in the specification to three. So for the cluster one, um, it should be two. And for the cluster two, it will be three. Also, I want to change the image to work as uh, like Nginx Alpine. And also I just want to add one more label to the metadata of this resource, of the deployment resource, not to the pod, but to the deployment uh with the uh, name of the cluster and also i have two commented stuff because like um i hadn't like any ideas how i can implement it uh, for which purposes however i just added it uh, to visualize so for example i can um, make some kind kind of uh, removement removement from um from my manifests uh, or I can just append the additional values like to the error. Like here I added uh, the um, key to the object and here I will just append the um, additional value to the array. So I'll just also share this, this example so you will show we, how, how to use it. However, this is also um described in the official documentation i will also add the link to the official documentation so let's try so we have the federated deployment that is called nginx and we already applied it so definitely um, we uh, can apply it um let's copy it from here so definitely uh, the already existing resource will be patched. So we don't have any kind of new resource. Or let's try to patch existing resource. Okay, and we can see that uh, the configuration for, for this federated resource, it will be changed. Okay, and now what we could see here, we have a cluster too. Okay, so we configure it, it and as you can see like that, um, all old pods will be kicked and we have a, a new pods and now on the cluster two we have three pods and here we still have two pods and without any changes and if you will take a look on the deployment itself so we have that label was applied and here if you will take a look like we don't have any kind of additional label for for this instance of the propagated resource uh, just to summarize, um, KubeFed um, project, it's placed under Kubernetes 6. So it's officially maintained by the Kubernetes community. Um, and like you could be involved uh, in the process of the development of this product. And also like from what I saw that um, even the Google Cloud Platform like recommend to use this tool if you want to have the multi-region deployment uh, with the Kubernetes. So it contains all the documentation. I will also share the link to it and you will be able to meet with it and you will have a starter pack or with comments um, to try it by yourself. Definitely one laptop will be enough for that. Um, and look like looks like that's all from my side. Any question, guys? I have a question. Uh, does KubeFit uh, have some uh, uh, dynamically configuration? So after deployment, uh, we can change uh, his manifest without like changing it in code. So for example, after deployment, like we need to create some uh, override some new values. 
so we already did it like in the in, the, in this demo so we um, wait, uh, let me show you just um okay this one it's what we applied from the beginning yeah uh, no i'm uh, not about i'm like <laughs> try to formalize my question okay go ahead maybe better in I write it in 2 p.m. because it's difficult. <laughs> okay. Have a little mess in my head. So. Okay. 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 Uh. Okay. Is there a no 